Het is zondag 25 september in Halifax, Canada. En ik uh, sta hier met Chris Walker. Um, ook voormalig pupil van uh, mijn coach Neil Harvey. Chris is uh, 44 jaar oud. En toen hij 29 was, uh, stond hij nummer 4 van de wereld. Hij is deze week uh, over uit New York om uh, met me te trainen hier in, uh, in Halifax. En uh, hij heeft uiteindelijk de finale van de British Open gehaald toen hij 34 was. Uh, de British Open, wat natuurlijk uh, een van de belangrijkste toernooien is uh, op het uh, scorecircuit, zeker toen. Uh, Chris, how are you doing? A little morning run? How are you feeling? Very good, thanks. LJ, yeah, it's been a good start to a Sunday. So, uh, you're uh, 44 years old. How you're holding up physically? You're still very fit. Uh, we train every day. Um, this has always been your strength, or? Uh... Um, I've always looked after my body and made sure that I, you know, paid attention to whether I'm uh, resting, uh, eating well, um, stretching, keeping fit, um, and also if I've had a, a bit of time off to actually um, to make sure that I build my training again, so that I'm not doing too much at the start of a of a new session. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I love working out. I love keeping in good shape and feeling healthy. So um, when you were uh, 33, 34, you uh, decided to go on a trip around the world. You were a full-time squash pro, um, traveling the world, playing tournaments, but then suddenly you had enough. Yeah, um, I just, you know, I had a great career up until then, and it got to the end of that season, and, and I'd had. A, a reasonable season, but I knew that I was kind of slipping a little bit and my ranking had gone down a few points and I just decided that I didn't want to go through another hard training summer and, uh, and I, my girlfriend at the time, we decided to travel around the world and that was in 2000 and we went to some great places including uh, the Olympics in Sydney and, uh, and so that was a good six month break and I didn't really know what I was going to do when I got back from that, you know, I, I was just kind of reflecting a little bit too. Um, and then I got back and, uh, and split up with my girlfriend when we got back, and that's another story. Um, but, but at the same time, I, I, I felt keen to get into some, to do something, you know, I was kind of, put a lot of emotional energy um, from that, and, and I just buried myself in some training. So I just hit the running machine again, and the track, and the court and started doing some ghosting and sprints and things like that and I suppose something that I knew really well um, just to seek some solace and and then at the same time I, I started playing a couple of matches and and I just got motivated again and I felt really uh, really hungry and I hadn't felt that hungry for for competition and and working out as I did for you know several probably two or three years so I went with it and uh, and started playing a couple of the tournaments again the smaller ones because my ranking had gone down um, I had a bet with uh, Ross Norman who was in my National League team at the time that, uh, that I, he said to me uh, you know Chris I, when I was 35 I was in the top 10 and you know I was 34 right then and, and my ranking had slipped and so it was a it was all I needed to egg me on and um, so that became one of my goals of, of part, you know, coming back to try and get back into the top 10. So um, then a few months later you suddenly, sort of out of nowhere, uh, you achieved probably uh, your best result in your career, making the final of the British Open. Um, was that a direct result of your, uh, your uh, six months off? I think um, it's certainly one of my highlights, you know, one of the most memorable um, things that I've done um, and yes I think that it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't had that six month break you know um, I, I, when I came back from that and having rested my mind and my body and really switched off from squash completely for, for most of that time um, I, I came back revitalized there's no question um, so to, to be able to do that after the break and, and come back and actually play some of my best squash as well um, was yeah, was really satisfying, but also it's quite interesting because I hadn't planned it that way. Yeah, so there's no reason to uh, not be able to perform at your best when you're uh, 34 or 35 years old. 
Uh, absolutely. I, you know, I think the game, and the game's changing all the time. You know, it's uh, shorter, shorter rallies, a lot faster with a lot of more twisting and turning. So we'll see how the next uh, wave of, of, uh, of players that are on the circuit now, how they weather the the, uh, the years as a, you know, as a career and see if they're physically capable of doing that at 35. Um, but you know, at the, at the time that I did that, I think you know, with looking after my body and, and just being disciplined through my career, by the time I got to 34, I was still, um, you know, I didn't have any bad tears, any bad injuries to, to have to deal with at the same time. All right, Chris. Well, thanks and uh, thanks a lot for sharing this with us, for sharing this with the uh, Dutch squash. Thank you well. Thank you well. <laughs> ah, he's fluent. <laughs> All right, guys. Catch you later. I just say and, and uh, enjoy the world in uh, Amsterdam. Good luck. In Rotterdam, but yeah, we in will. Rotterdam. <laughs> Same Rotterdam. Good luck, Elvin.